Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Isn't he just a fantastic, amazing man? Please give him a round of applause, please. Thank you very, uh, very much, guys, for coming and um, uh, for uh, staying uh, this long just to listen to us uh, tell you our stories. I am very humbled to be speaking after and before such interesting and wonderful crowd. Um, what I want to talk about today is called Inspiring Success. It's how do, we, uh, how do we work together to make sure that we are inspiring people for the future. Sometimes people um, uh, think about their priorities. One of the things that I wanted to talk about today, how do we talk about our priorities? Are we talking about our plans for five years? Are we talking about our plans for the next 10 years? Are we talking about sustainability for the future? I always, I'm, I've always been obsessed with the idea that the first thing that we all need to think about is what is, how are we going to build our own legacy? So what I want to talk about today is two things, building a legacy and inspiring success. The reason I'm here today is you. I'm so blessed with so many people around me who are really inspiring and who are really building a legacy for our country. What is going to be your legacy after 100 years? Not after five years, what, not after 10 years, what is going to be your legacy after 100 years? And this is what Riyadh is about. I am very glad because I came today thinking that I'm going to talk about many things. But as soon as I walked in, I saw that my boss is here. So I wanted to change the topic and speak about the weather. But now, <laughs> I just noticed that he's gone so I can talk about interesting stuff. <laughs> the most important thing that I want to say is that what we are talking about today is the eight habits of inspiring people, the eight habits of inspiring entrepreneurs. And the first story that I want to talk about is about a man, a young man who was 25 years old, who was thinking very hard about the, 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 the past of his nation and the future of the nation as well. And he always had one question. How, did, um, how were Omanis successful in building an empire in the past? That man is His Majesty Sultan Qaboos. He said the first thing, and this is in a book called Reformer on the Throne. In the book Reformer on the Throne, he says that between the years 1966 and 1970, he was looking out of the window of Al Hassan Palace, looking at the rough seas of Dufar. And you know how rough the sea in Dufar is. And he was wondering, how come Omanis built that legacy of an empire? And the first step was to be proactive. He always thought about going out and meeting people and not waiting for people to come to him. We spend our life waiting for things to happen to us, waiting for success, waiting for love, waiting for entrepreneurship, waiting for, like uh, Fahmi said for, uh, uh, about Musa, waiting for love and marriage. But His Majesty, what he did is that he was proactive and he went to people. So the first thing Riyadh tries to do is that we are proactive. We go out for you. We, this is the picture of my boss going to entrepreneurs themselves. He, we, are, we have a plan to go out and meet inspiring people who are in the fashion business, inspiring people who are in the retail business, inspiring people who are environmentalists, inspiring people who are in the tourism business. This is the first thing that inspiring entrepreneurs should do. The second thing that we, uh, we thought about is beginning with the end in mind. What we are really hoping to do is to turning you into success stories. What we really need in Oman is a paradigm shift. How do we change the mentalities of people to be uh, success stories for the future? We are working with inspiring people like this young woman. Her name is Nadia Maqbul. She's one of the star architects around the world. And what we do is we use role models hoping to change uh, the, the mindset of people. And we can only achieve, achieve paradigm shift and changing the mindset of people when we have the right role models in our society. This is the Entrepreneurship Award, which is going to be on the 26th of January. Uh, and you are all invited. It's Sultan Qaboos University. where present our society with role models in different kinds of sectors. So I hope this will be the success stories that will help us in doing two things, building a legacy for Oman and inspiring success. But the real inspiration of success is you. I am so blessed to see people who I know are very successful and are here in the crowd. And what we are doing is working with you so that we share the knowledge and we share your success stories with the rest of the society so we, we, do, we uh, achieve that paradigm shift.
The third thing that we try to do to build a legacy and inspire success is to put first things first, to get our priorities straight. And to get our priorities straight, we've decided to do one thing. Everything that we do in Riyadh, in the public authority for SMEs development, is about you. What we do is that we have no hierarchies. We have the chairman, the minister, his deputies, the undersecretaries. They have each month to sit with entrepreneurs face to face and discuss with them what is your priority, because your priority is our priority. This is a picture where we get, for example, one of our priorities is meeting with entrepreneurs and get them to think out of the box. So this is actually our chairman, the minister, chairing a video conference where we introduced Omani entrepreneurs like you to entrepreneurs in Malta. And the idea is we wanted the same way Malta is the gateway to Europe, we wanted Omani entrepreneurs to be the gateway to Asia and to Africa as well. So this is what we mean by putting first things first. To think that our priority is to get our entrepreneurs to think out of the box through hearing from them directly. The fourth thing that we try to do is to think win-win. One of the impediments to success in Oman is that sometimes we are thinking only about, we put ourselves only in our own shoes. What we try to do in Riyadh, we try to put ourselves in the other sector's shoes. What is the public sector thinking about? What is the uh, civil society sector thinking about? But we try to do a new thing. This is called the lab. The lab is where you mix different materials and elements to come up with something new, right? So what we do in our discussions is that we don't only get the public sector and the private sector. We get the public sector, the private sector, innovators, scientists, journalists, and we put them in one room and we give them, these are the issues of small and medium enterprises in Oman. How do we solve them? So the same way scientists mix elements to make something new, we get people like you, inspiring people like you. Please give yourselves a round of applause. We get people like you to think about the solutions for the future. And this is the idea of the lab. And by the way, this is the picture of my boss who just left, uh, so that I can talk about him now freely. Another thing that we try to do is to seek first to understand, seek first to understand and then being understood. One of the most important issues that we have in life that sometimes we just assume that we understand each other, but we actually don't. The first thing that we did when, uh, when we joined Riyadh, this is actually my second month, and I've learned a lot over the past uh, two months in Riyadh. I've asked my team to count how many meetings we had together, and since the 15th of November, I had 168 meetings with inspiring people like you. And this picture was our first meeting. We did not meet with the outside world until we met as a team with each other. And please give a round of applause for my team because they are here. And I think they came just to ask me for leave tomorrow. But before meeting the outside world, we sat with each other and we decided to think about, do we understand our business? Do we really know what entrepreneurship means? Do we really understand small and medium enterprises? And this is where we draw our strategy. So even though we had international consultants to do our strategy, we met together so that we nationalize it and we omanize it before we talk about it to the outside world. The sixth thing that, uh, the, uh, the sixth thing that we try to do is synergize. One of, the first prior, one of the things that Riyadh really focuses on is innovation. How do we create new projects? And through innovation and focusing on eco-businesses, on environment, and supporting environmentalists, like this gentleman here in exhibitions, we try to create synergy. Not only focusing on traditional businesses, that um, uh, industries, and quick profits, we are thinking of sustainability. What kind of businesses that we are going to leave for, not for our children, but also for our grandchildren. These are not something that will bring us profit in five or 10 years. But I hope that by supporting entrepreneurs, um, such as um, eco-businesses, this was um, Ibda'at Bi'iyah. 
exhibition by the Ministry of Environment that happened just last week. And we're supporting these kinds of entrepreneurs because we want our grandchildren to have the same beautiful environment that we have today. And also we try to keep it as interesting as possible. This is, this is a picture of our meetings and we call this sharpening the saw. Sharpening the saw talks about how do you learn something new every week. So what we do is as a team, every week we have a, a, a challenge. Can we really learn something new every week? Internet of things, value co-creation, co-ownership of ideas. So this is what we do, and I encourage all entrepreneurs, at least every week, try to learn something new. You cannot be inspiring and inspire others and inspire yourself if you stop learning. The moment you stop learning is the moment you stop growing. The last thing that I wanted to talk about is the most important thing, is that what, uh, I shouldn't say this when my boss is here, is that I am enjoying and I love my job so much that I will do it without them paying me. And the reason is because we are your voice. We are the voice of entrepreneurs. So the eighth habit of inspiring entrepreneurs is seek not only to be your own voice, but seek to give you others' voice as well. I really hope that by giving these eight uh, habits of 